Welcome to a picturesque neighborhood in Tokyo with some construction going off to the side, so please excuse those noises if you hear them. Um, we're here to look at the brand new 2021 Honda Fit, which I believe is probably the best family car you can have if you have a small house in Tokyo. If you're wondering why you wouldn't get a bigger car, uh, like an SUV, like most Americans would, uh, you clearly haven't seen the size of the parking spaces for a regular Tokyo house. So the styling of this car gives me a few mixed feelings. Um, number one, the quality of everything, just it looks good. I, especially the headlights just look really high quality and kind of luxurious. The car itself looks good, um, but it looks good in a sort of cutesy family way. The car looks like a Pokemon, and in that sense it's cute, but because it's a cute car and it doesn't look cool per se, it's not really going to give you any masculinity points. But at the same time, this isn't meant to be a cool sports car. It's meant to be a family car, and these cute looks in that bubble shape kind of works for its purpose and at the very minimum I can say this car doesn't look like a cheap family car it looks like a quality small car and you can't really complain too much about that so obviously if you have a family you need a car that fits your entire family in there and despite this being a subcompact car this is just limousine levels of legroom back here. I mean, there's some full-size sedans that just don't offer the same space. This driver seat's in my driving position and I can just lay way back before my knees touch the front. Middle seat's not too bad. And then obviously you can f easily fit two big adults in here, especially average sized Japanese children. They can just play back here and have a good time. So one thing people don't talk about much is the passenger seat. Um, so if you're driving, your significant other will obviously be here if they're with you. And this is a very spacious front seat. I was actually quite surprised when I got in here. I was like, wow, this is just a nice place to be as a passenger. So following the theme of having a very spacious interior, this car also has a very big trunk. I can easily get in here and fit myself in here with no trouble. There's a low loading lip, which makes getting things in and out easy. And if you need extra space, this car actually has a completely flat load floor. So you can get lots of things in here, no problem. And you can even go camping if you wanted to. Uh. The interior of this car is actually quite nice for the price. Uh, the car starts at about 1.6 million yen, or a bit under $16,000, for the complete base model. And obviously for that price, you still get some hard plastics and, um, you know, the materials aren't going to be Lexus quality. However, the styling is quite nice. The materials don't look cheap. They don't feel that cheap and they have these lovely white accents everywhere and the overall design is very modern. On top of that you have this beautiful LCD display in the middle instead of a gauge cluster that gives you all sorts of good information and some sort of family specific information like if one of your kids doesn't have their seat belt on. Um, it's a very well laid out interior with lots of strange cubby holes and spaces as well. Uh, the navigation system I can't really comment on because I think this one was put in by the rental car company, but the placement of it, it's not jutting out of the dash like on a Mazda and it's not too down low where you have to take your eyes completely off the road. But also some alerts come up on that little gauge clustery LCD screen in the middle. And overall, I think the interior of this car is very nice for such a cheap small car.
The first thing I want to mention about this car and what makes it such a great little city family car for Tokyo is the visibility. Um, you have these triangular windows cut out at the front near the windshield and that really, really helps. Um, you have no idea how much that helps with visibility. It helps you get through like the narrow roads in the residential areas much better because you can see where the walls are hiding. And just overall, the visibility is great. Uh, the maneuverability of the car is great. It just makes a very good little city car. So for day-to-day -day driving, this car actually rides quite well. Uh, the suspension's a bit firmer than I thought it would be, but it goes over bumps pretty well. I don't really have any complaints about that. Um, when it goes through corners, it doesn't roll. Um, like, I was expecting a bit of body roll, especially given the Pokemon shape of the car. But it's been fine. It handles pretty well. But the main issue I have is the steering feels quite dead. The electric rack doesn't provide much feedback. Uh, there's steering weight, but that's very different from feedback. So, you know, uh, you get what you get. It's nothing terrible, though. This car was not meant to be a sports car. It wasn't even meant to be a hot hatchback. It's meant to be a family car. And with that in mind, I have no complaints about the steering. It's fine. It doesn't have like boat steering like a Nissan Note. The steering feels sharp enough and it's accurate enough. And like I said, it just drives really well. Um, it has this sort of luxury car smoothness to it but it's definitely not luxury car levels, but it has that sort of reminiscence to it. And for this price of car, that's actually really good. So this car only has 98 horsepower from the 1.3 liter engine, but in Tokyo, that's more than enough if you have a decent transmission. And as much as I don't like CVTs, this is a pretty good one. There's a fairly severe rubber banding effect if you put the car into sport mode as it tries to keep the engine revs at a good place for power. And then the car kind of just feels a bit rough. Um, so it doesn't actually feel sporty, it just feels a bit sharper and quicker than normal. And to be honest, I would just leave it in normal drive mode because then the car itself is just much smoother to drive. This is not a sporty car, so might as well just keep it in the comfort mode. So in conclusion, this is a fantastic family car. It kind of does everything well, and the only thing it doesn't do particularly well is just kind of the sporty stuff, but it's not meant to do that. And given that fact, it actually drives pretty well. I don't really have many complaints about this car. The question is, would I get one? If I had a family, I might choose this over a Mazda 2 if my wife really pushed me on the issue. But if she didn't, I would still buy the Mazda 2 because I'm a car enthusiast and I'd rather have fun when I drive.